Welcome back, everybody, to Dr. Sellers Educate. We're happy that you're back as we continue to support you on your journey to success. Our mission at Dr. Sellers Educate is very simple. It is to support every nurse educator to achieve success on the CNE exam or to be successful in renewing your certification. We are excited about continuing our series in our snapshots of focusing on exam analysis from A to Z. We get this question a lot and many nurse educators do have gaps as it relates to exam analysis, the statistical evaluation of what those scoring reports mean when we get the data back about how students performed on an exam. Our goal here is to introduce you to a new term every single snapshot until we get to Z. So we started last week with A, which was analysis, which was just really a general overview of the exam analysis and item analysis process, okay? And in this snapshot, we're focusing on B. We're gonna tell you what that's all about in just a second. So here's the question. What do I need to know for the CNE exam related to exam analysis, okay? That we get that question a lot. And sometimes it's a question as to what the data means that we see on our statistical report once students complete an exam, okay? So if you're here just wanting to have a better understanding of, of exam analysis, it's great to have you here as well. Remember to subscribe to our channel so you'll be alerted every single time there's a new episode. If you're listening on our podcast, you can also subscribe there so that you will know right away when we have a new update, which usually happens every single week. For your resources, you want to go ahead and pull out Billings and Halstead Teaching and Nursing 6th Edition, and that is going to outline some of the really important information that you'll need to know to help you to help close your knowledge gaps. Specifically, when you look at evaluation strategies, um, that's where you're going to find some information about resources and really guidelines that we should follow when it comes to developing valid and reliable exams. Um, specifically looking at chapter 24 is going to give you some information about not only exam analysis, but also just some really good general information about the process we should follow when we are determining how we're going to evaluate our students. And then also chapter 25 is going to help you clarify some terms related to exams and what should be included in a detailed test blueprint and why it's so important for us to consider both norm reference test and criterion reference testing or exams, all right? So that is the resource that you wanna use. We like to role model best practices here at Dr. Sellers Educate and using Billings and Halstead as a primary resource is always a recommendation that we have. Do wanna let you know in case you haven't heard already that NLN has released an updated detailed exam blueprint for the CNE exam. We will be providing a webinar after we have a chance to kind of dig into the details over the next couple of weeks. We'll work on a curriculum to bring you an update um, from the information on the NLN website and what's included in the candidate handbook. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into our content for this new snapshot. Always reach out to us, info at drsellerseducate.com if you have questions about any of the content that we review in our episodes. Let's take a look at this testimonial from Brandy. We always love hearing from our nurse educator colleagues about their results. Um, she shared with us, I passed the CNE exam today. Dr. Sellers Educate is exactly what I needed to learn the content and provide the confidence to pass the CNE. After failing the first time, I inquired about study resources and Dr. Sellers was recommended to me. I utilized Dr. Sellers Educate self-paced study resource, workbook, and seven-week plan. In addition, I listened to many of her YouTube videos, which explained the content and gave me an opportunity to practice questions. I feel blessed to have been supported on my journey. She was amazing. Thank you. We're always excited to hear from our nurse educator colleagues while they're on their journey. Now, I do want to provide another important update. We heard from a nurse educator this week that she did not pass the CNA exam. And it can be devastating, right? That's the first question that you think about, what could I have done differently? Um, and then the next question should be, what can I do so this doesn't happen again? Don't give up. That is our message. Don't give up, 
even if you're unsuccessful the first time or even the second time, we actually have a testimonial right here on our YouTube channel about a nurse educator colleague that wasn't successful after the first time, wasn't successful after the second time. Okay, but when we started working with her and really drilling into those knowledge gaps, we were able to work on a solid study plan that was individualized to meet her needs. And she was successful on the third attempt, okay? We're working with a nurse educator colleague right now to help her close her knowledge gaps, to take a, a serious look in the mirror to identify where those gaps are and what process do we need to follow and what support does she need to ensure she is closing her knowledge gaps. So we are transparent here, Dr. Sellers Educate, and we celebrate the, all nurse educators that are on the journey. We are here to support you until you are successful, no matter how long that takes, okay? So just know that we're here to support you and there's no shame you should feel. We are going to celebrate because at least once you take the exam, it's a data point, right? It's a data point that tells us whether or not we're competent in all of those competency areas, or if we have a few gaps that we need to focus on. All right. And speaking of gaps, let's start with our thought provoking question. So we have a nurse educator who is evaluating the results of a recent exam. When determining what actions to take based on the statistical analysis data, what would be the best next step to take for a point by serial correlation coefficient equivalent to 0 0.50? So it's positive and it is 0 0.50. We have options A, no changes needed, B, revise the correct answer, C, revise the distractors, or D, revise the question. All right, another tip you wanna make sure that you follow every time you watch our snapshot is to print out your study worksheet, okay? So go ahead and do that right now if you haven't already. You're gonna to put today's date, whatever date that is for you that you're watching this episode. And then you wanna go ahead and write down, what is your objective? What do you wanna achieve at the end of our time together today? This is going to help you increase accountability um, for yourself and just be very transparent with your gap areas, okay? So if you have no idea what a point by zero correlation coefficient is, you will in about, in about five more minutes. Um, but you want to make sure that you write that down as a gap area for you. The goal is that you're able to take some time after reviewing this snapshot. That's why we call them this a snapshot, because it's a short segment that's very focused and looking at a specific content area aligned with the NLN task statements for all of the nurse educator competencies. Okay, so if you're on the journey for CNE, this is relevant content. If you're on the journey for CNECL, the good news is you don't have to worry about exam questions related to the exam analysis. You, there are other though resources or evaluation strategies that you will be evaluated on under this competency, okay, competency three. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and move on in looking at what is it that you need to know and which specific area are we focusing on in this snapshot? Well, first step is having a good understanding of where you are today, okay? So a key step in avoiding failure on the exam is doing a very honest knowledge assessment, specifically looking at application. So what is my ability to apply the concepts that I am learning about or be are reinforcing as part of my study plan. This is an exam analysis assessment that we have developed to help you identify where your gaps may be, or perhaps you're able to validate that you have a strong knowledge related to the exam analysis process. Okay, so this is the QR code. You can take a picture of it, and it's also right here in the description of this episode. B is our focus for this snapshot. Last week was A for analysis, and this week is B specifically looking at by serial. Point by serial correlation coefficient is what our focus is. The definition is that it allows us to identify how well an item is discriminating between those high-performing students and those low-performing students. So which students are knowledgeable about the content that we're asking in the on the exam question and which students are not knowledgeable about the content? You may see the term point by serial index used interchangeably with 
point by zero correlation coefficient, it is the same term. Okay, so don't let that confuse you. Next, let's take a look at what the scoring report may tell us or what the statistical analysis data may tell us when we have a high point by zero. Well, it means that students selecting the correct response are students with higher total scores. Okay, so these students were very knowledgeable about the content if we have a high point by zero. So you may ask, what is a low or a high point by serial? Okay, so if we have a PBI or a PBCC that is less than 0 0.15, we should revise it. Okay, we should revise the correct answer. If we have a mean of a PBI of 0 0.20 or greater, then it is a good to acceptable value. Okay, so... If you chose for the thought-provoking question, A, no changes are needed, you are correct. And you should give yourself a round of applause, okay? Because a point by serial correlation coefficient of positive 0 0.50 means that the students who were very knowledgeable about the content asked in this question chose the correct answer. So therefore, no changes are needed, okay? So with the point by serial correlation coefficient, or point by serial index, we are evaluating the student's knowledge about an ability to choose the correct answer related to that content. All right, so hopefully this information is just a reinforcement for you, but if not, feel free to reach out and you can find other resources available on our website to help you close your knowledge gaps related to the exam analysis. Know that you don't have to go on this journey alone and we will help you move forward. Even if the outcome is not ideal and where we want it to be the first time, your results, we are committed to supporting you until you are successful. Again, no, no matter how long that takes. Until next time, this has been Dr. Sellers Educate and we will see you in the next episode. Have a great one, everybody.